Do you know what's going on in Ethiopia right now? It's kind of nuts. Let's hear from these white saviors break it down like no one else can. Let's talk about Ethiopia. For a long time, it was seen as one of Africa's big success stories. With a booming economy and a charismatic leader who won the Nobel Peace Prize. But right now, things are looking really bad. The conflict between the government and Tigray rebels is escalating. So who are the Tigray rebels? Well, let's start here with a map of Ethiopia. The Tigrayans are this region here, making up 6% of the Ethiopian population. The Tigrayans political party, or TPLF, actually ruled Ethiopia for 30 years, autocratically. Autocratic means taking no account of other people's wishes or opinions, or having absolute power. They brought a lot of money into Ethiopia, apparently, but it just didn't reach the majority of the people. Hence the people, 90% of them, rebelled and backed their own leader, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed who freed the political prisoners the Tigray People's Liberation Front locked up for speaking their rights and concerns and worked to unite the different ethnic groups across Ethiopia, even established peaceful relations with their neighbors in the north, Eritrea. The TPLF wasn't happy about this and wanted power back. By the way, during their 30 years in autocratic power, they had acquired Ethiopia's weapons that they refused to give back after being ousted. And so they launched a missile on civilians in the Ethiopian city of Bahir and even launched a missile on Eritrea's civilians. The democratically elected Ethiopian government led by Prime Minister Mr. Abiy Ahmed defended its civilians. Eritrea defended its civilians by going in on Tigrayan territory. And eventually, the Ethiopian Prime Minister declared a ceasefire to protect its civilians. But TPLF ignored it, set on marching into the capital to take their autocratic power back. The wild part is, although the UN and Amnesty International both recognized most of the atrocities were committed by TPLF, TPLF still accused the Ethiopian government of genocide and ethnic cleansing, demanding the US and Europe, who had essentially been backing TPLF from jump, to sanction or block the economic interactions to Ethiopia, and did. Which is why you see the Ethiopian majority waving signs and messages like this, and American politicals claiming empathy and a righteous cause for Tigrayans like this. The truth, what do you think? So basically you got this one Ethiopian leader who 90% of Ethiopians back, who wants to unite the different ethnic groups of Ethiopia for the betterment of all of Ethiopia, and you got this group that's really against it. So much so against it, that they'll harm their own people to get in power that nobody else wanted you to have. The pattern. Finding the one capitalist group amid a country's rise to communal politics is a trademark of the U.S. It's actually exactly what the U.S. did in Chile when the president there, Salvador Allende, was trying to socialize and centralize the government to benefit majority Chileans. The U.S. quickly identified and planted a cruel Chilean dictator named Pinochet who went on to commit huge atrocities by massacring countless humans standing for their rights. And that's actually why the U.S. is still salty at Cuba for toppling their capitalist dictator regime under a very greedy guy named Batista. Since then, Cuba's been free of bitter class warfare and having to pay to afford medical care, much to the U.S.'s chagrin, because, you know, you still gotta pay for it here. The solution, I mean, you could just stop this relationship with your narcissistic capitalist government and put in a party aligned with humanity over profit. My two cents. But more on this later. Next up, a cool recipe I made. Thank you.